Welcome to Data Structures with Professor Taylor. Today I want to talk about stacks. So the basic idea of a stack is a familiar one from the real world. We have stacks of pancakes, stacks of plates, stacks of books, of rocks, of blocks. But when we think about stacks in the computer science context, what we're really talking about is something where we have a stack and we can only access it from the top. We're never going to be able to pull a plate from the middle of the stack. We're always going to be taking that top plate, putting that top plate back on. More formally, a stack in computer science is an abstract data type where the data will be a linear list of elements where one end will be designated as the top of the stack and we will only add or remove at the top. So we're gonna have four key operations for stacks. Is empty, we'll answer the question, does the stack have any elements in it right now? If it's empty, there are none, that'll be true. If it has elements, then is empty will obviously be false. We will have a top, which simply returns the top element from the stack. So what's the value that's at the top of the stack? Push will take an element and add that element to the top of the stack. Pop will do the opposite, removing the top element from the stack. In many implementations, pop will also return that top element, but not always. We can have other kinds of operations. Sometimes we care about the size of our stack and we'll keep track of that. Um, sometimes we'll be in a situation where our stack can get full, so we would keep track of that. But the key operations for a stack would be these four. Using a stack, we look at this and we think of it as an empty stack. We're gonna push elements onto the top of the stack and pop them off. We often refer to this as last in, first out, because the last thing we put in will be the first thing we take out. Suppose we have a stack variable called my stack. We're going to push y onto the stack. So that then would add y to the stack. Then if we push s, we'll add s to the stack. If we push a, we'll add a on top of that s. At this point, we can only access the A. We add E, we'll add the E to the top of the stack, and we can only access the E at this point. So pushing is simply going to add the element to the top of our stack, making it the one we can access right now. So here's what it might look like to then turn around and take things back off the stack. So I'm setting up a string variable, and then a little loop that says, while my stack is not empty, while I still have things in my stack, then I'm gonna take the top element from the stack and add it to my string. So we put the E on the string. And then I'm gonna pop that element off the stack. So the E is now gone. If I go back up and check that our stack is still not empty. So we add the A to the string and pop it off the stack. Our stack is still not empty. So we add the S to the string and pop that off the stack. Still not empty, so we'll add the Y to the string and then pop that off the stack. Now this time the stack is empty. So we'll move on and do whatever it is we want to do. In this case, I've indicated that I might want to print the string. But that's how working with a stack goes. We have two implementation choices when it comes to actually writing our stacks. One of those is an array. So in that case, we'll simply store the elements in the array. The bottom of the stack will be at index zero. The top of the stack, of course, will be however many elements we actually have. So as we add elements, we'll be adding to the end of the list in the array. Our other option is to use a linked list. So in this case, the top of our stack would be the head of our list. And whenever we want to add items 
to the list, we're going to simply insert them at the front of our list, remove things from the front of our list. So the end of our list will be the bottom of our stack. So a little more detail in the array implementation, we'll have data that is the array and then an int, which I've called top here, that keeps track of where the top of the stack is. Is empty is going to simply look at the value of top the way I've done this. When top is minus one, the stack is empty. Top, the method is simply going to return whatever value is at the index top. So in this case, the letter E. Push will increment top and insert the value that we pass in at that new index. So if we push something else onto this stack, we'll change top to four and put that value in the four slot. And then pop will simply decrement top. If we are also returning the value, we'll want to grab that value out to return and then decrement. The linked list implementation, one of the simplest things you can do with a linked list. The data is going to simply be a singly linked list. We're only going to work at one end, so there's no reason for us to have a more complex list. We generally just keep it a nice, simple, singly linked list, no empty head node or anything like that. The typical head, we might call it head, but we might also call it top, as I've done in the drawing here. Is empty is going to simply check for a null head reference or pointer, depending on our language. So if top, as I've done it in the drawing, is null, then it's empty. Otherwise, it's not. The function top will return the value in that head node, in that first node. Push will insert a new node with the value at the head of the list. And pop will simply remove the node at the head of the list, possibly returning the value. So some applications of stacks that we might come across. One is evaluating postfix expressions. So you may have seen arithmetic written out in postfix form, where we have the two operands followed by the operator. If we have our expressions in that format, it's actually very, very easy to evaluate the expression using a stack. We simply, whenever we get an operand, we're going to push it onto the stack. Whenever we get an operator, we're going to pop the last two items on the stack, evaluate that expression, and push the result back on the stack. When we have no more expression, we should have one value on the stack that is the result. We can also convert infix expressions to our postfix expressions, a little more complicated. Checking for balance symbols, another pretty obvious thing for a stack, actually. If we come to a symbol that's an opening symbol, we shove it on our stack. When we come to a closing symbol, we check to see if the top of our stack is the matching opening symbol. If it is, we pop it off. When we get to the end of whatever we're checking, if our stack is empty, everything matched. If at any point, what we're comparing to doesn't match, so we have a closing symbol, if we don't have that opening symbol, then we have a problem. Multiple undo and redo. So if you're in Word, Paint, many, many different kinds of things, PowerPoint, uh, if you do things, you can then undo, sometimes many things that you can undo. Those things you can undo are being stored in a stack. If you undo them, commands to redo the work goes into a different stack. If I redo, then it'll shift over to the undo stack and so forth. So this is how we actually manage undo and redo. Recognizing palindromes. So if we have a string and we want to know it's a palindrome, one way we can do that, one of many ways we can do that, 
is to shove the first half of the string onto a stack and then start popping things off and comparing them as we go on through the string. And if they all match, then we had a palindrome. Of course, if you have an odd number of letters, you just throw out that middle element. If you have an even, then you do it exactly as I described. Many, many more uses. Many of them are as part of more complex data structures and algorithms that you'll learn about later in your computer science career. So I hope that gives you some idea of what stacks are all about. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time when we talk about cues.